All right, so this is part um, three of the series about uh, pulse induction and metal detectors. So this time we are looking at uh, the sampling, sampling integrator. But before we get into that, let's calm down and look into just the integrator when, for instance, looking at the DC voltage, see what happens, see what it looks like. So here what I did is that I have a op-amp set up as a perfect integrator. So there's no resistor here to limit the gain. So there's only a capacitor in that feedback loop. And it is set at one microfarad and here I'm putting initial condition equals zero, which you do by doing a control plus right click like this. Control right click and you go into that spice line and you put IC equals zero. If you don't do that, and if you run this thing, this integrator, the voltage is going to go straight up to the positive rail and it's going to stay there. So there's no ramp. But if you do that, you're going to get the ramp. Okay, so this is the, so this is like a non-inverting, non-inverting. So the input is here going to the plus and this is the minus. So it is the, the feedback loop and that the R here. So if there was a resistor here that would be the denominator for the gain. And those are the rails. So let's run this thing. So let's look. So this is the input. So it's just a DC voltage at uh, one millivolt. Let's get rid of that. And let's look at the output. So in theory, in theory, it should be a, a ramp. It should look like a ramp. And it is. Okay, so it goes up like this. So that's your integrator. And then it, it can go on indefinitely. And then at some point it stops because it's, re it's reaching the, uh, the rail, the rail voltage at 5 volts. So now it stays at 5. And never discharges because there's no resistor here. But anyway, if you go back, if you go back to the input, let me explain what the integra integration means. Yeah, did it. Let's go back to the input. So this is my input. So what is, what does an integrator do? It ba it basically integrates, as the name implies. So what does that mean? Is that uh, you don't need to know math at all. It's basically computing the area under here. So if your air is looking at this area, if your air is looking at this area, if you're over there, it's looking at this area under the curve. In this case, a straight line. So that's why you end up with a ramp because it's every time you, you move this way, as time goes by, you get a little more area. So that's all there is to it in terms of what integrator means. It's just the area under the curve. Okay, so now uh, let's look at something a little bit more, a little bit less simple. Okay, so uh, let's move along and look into a slightly more complex uh, input signal, basically. So here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, change the input signal so that it, it, it's, a, it's just a, a single pulse. It's not DC, it's a pulse that goes from um, zero, basically to one, and then goes back to zero. So one pulse. And the way I do that is through you is a by using a switch i'm using a switch that's controlled by a voltage source so that's your so this is uh my input here 
and you have a switch and you have a that battery voltage that I had before, the one millivolt, the DC voltage. And this is controlled by this pulse. And this pulse uh, goes from minus one to one. So from zero second to 2.5 seconds, it, uh, it's at minus one, and then it's at one for five seconds, and then it goes back to minus one. Okay, so again, this is the op amp used as an integrator, and this time, I'm going to consider putting the that resistor here, but for now, let's let's get rid of it for now. Now, one thing that's important is that when you model a switch like this, you need to put that into your into your model. So dot model SW. So this first SW is the name of the switch. So this is the name of the switch, and then this, and this is the threshold. So here Vt equals zero. I think it's the default actually. So if uh, your voltage is less than Vt, the switch is going to be open. And if it's greater than Vt, the switch is going to be closed. Um, yeah, what am I saying here? Without the resistance parallel to the capacitor, the capacitor doesn't discharge past that 7.5 seconds. By adding the resistor, the capacitor can discharge and the voltage can go back down to zero but the ramp loses its linear, linearity. We're, we're going to look into that. It's just a fun fact more than anything. Okay, let's run this thing without the resistor. Okay, so let's look at that pulse. Okay, so from 0 to 2.5 seconds, it's minus 1. Then from 2.5 to 7.5 is plus 1, and then it goes back to minus 1. So this means that during this time the switch is uh, open then it's closed and then it's open again so it's slightly different from what i did just before and the next one would be a real pulse with a bunch of pulses but this is just like an intermediate step step okay so let's get rid of this and let's look at the output so the output so this is the output so it's basically the same as before but as I say in that comment here, the capacitor doesn't discharge the voltage. Once you hit that uh, rail, the voltage stays, stays at that rail, and um, which is a bit weird. I mean, it should go back down when you you know shut off the when the signal goes back to zero. So let's put let's rerun this thing and put a put a resistor here. See what happens okay resistor in let's run this thing so this basically limits the gain to one meg over 1k so yeah you don't have a clean ramp you don't have a linear ramp it's like exponential and the voltage instead of saying at instead of staying at uh, one volt it's one volt now because of the i limited the uh, I limited the uh, gain, so it doesn't go uh, doesn't go um, up to the rail. And now I can discharge, and you go back to zero. Okay, so that was just uh, an aside. I thought that was interesting, but maybe not. What we're going to look at next is a uh, a bunch of pulses, not just one. Okay, let's move on and now look. And look at the series of pulses instead of just one instead of just one long pulse so the integrator is exactly the same the only thing that changes here is the pulse so now the pulse uh, instead of a, being one long pulse is a series of uh, very short pulses and that's going to get closer to what the output of the uh, preamp of the metal detector looks like not quite but close okay so let's run this thing but first let's look at the pulse so that's my pulse so again nothing before 2.5 seconds and nothing past 7.5 seconds so it goes from minus one to one and again it controls the switch so we can look at the input signal actually I should have done that with the other one, but this is the input signal after the switch. 
So after the switch, so this is the input signal to the integrator. So it goes from 0 to 1 millivolt. And it looks like this. So nothing until 2.5. A bunch of pulses. And then nothing after 7.5. So let's look at what the output looks like. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so this is the output. So this is uh, where the pulse, the pulses begin at 2.5 and this is where they stop. So it looks like this. Still have a ramp. You have that staircase effect because of the, uh, the fact that the uh, the, tr the switch is open for a very short time at each pulse. And because the capacitor doesn't discharge, it's like a straight line here. Otherwise it would dip down. And here if you if you connect the resistor, it would dip down as well. Okay, next 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 stop is gonna be a uh, an input signal that varies. It's gonna be a similar uh, train of pulses but with a um, modulated so it's going to vary it's going to be modu modulated by a sine wave you'll see okay so this is the last one but before <laughs> we even get there we need to understand how the metal detector is supposed to work um so when you swing your coil over a metal target so what the integrator should output is a signal that starts let's say at zero as you get closer to the target that signal goes up let's say it's some kind of voltage so that signal voltage goes up and then as you go away from the target that signal voltage should go down so that's the the behavior we expect the output of the integrator so the, the voltage at the output should increase as you get closer to the target and decrease as you get away from the target right so that's what we're going to look first so let's run this thing okay so let's look at the input uh, the input to the integrator this is this one enveloped 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 pulse so this is exactly uh, what the what the uh, input of the integrator would look like if you swing the coil over a metal target so it's low when you're away from the target it increases its maximum when you're over the target and then as you move away from the target it gets lower and lower in theory the output the output of the integrator should kind of look like this. It should go similar to this. It should go up and then go down. So let's get rid of this. And let's see what the output is here. Let's not talk about that capacitor and resistor yet. Let's just look at the output of the integrator. And this is what you get. You get, there's a, there's a little bit of a delay, but you get that behavior. So all is good. But that's not the only, that's not the only behavior that we expect from a metal detector. What we also expect, ex expect is that when the coil is stationary stationary doesn't move over the metal target if it doesn't move the signal at the output of the integrator should be low it should be low that's the that's the hard part to understand if you're if you don't know about metal detectors so that's the other requirement that's why you have this uh, capacitor and a resistor here let's look at another signal that simulate being stationary over, over the metal target. Let's get rid of this. Oh, let's get rid of this. So we're gonna change we're gonna change our input to the integrator from that enveloped pulse 
to just the, re the regular pearls from last time. So let's do this. So okay, and then move this one to the input. Okay, so let now let's run it. Let's run that one. Okay, so let's look at that pulse. Okay, it's the same as before. But now let's look at the output of the integrator. Okay, so this is the output of the integrator, and that's a bit of an issue because here the, the signal uh, rises. The signal at the output of the integrator rises. And remember that we said that we don't want that. We want the signal to maybe rise a little bit, but stay down so that it doesn't detect anything. That's the behavior that's expected. If you add a capacitor and a resistor like this, um, it's basically a, uh, it's a high pass filter. And uh, the idea is that it's going to get rid of anything that's static. It's only, only going to keep dynamic stuff. So if the signal at the input is kind of static, it stays at the same level, it should get rid of it. So let's look at it. Yeah, so that's what we want. You want, uh, you want the rise, you still want the rise, but you want the signal to go down, to go down. And that's what you get. So yeah, so let's go back. So here I put, I wrote some stuff, explanation, and this I-pass filter C2R3, it's known as a self-adjusting threshold, as a T. And apparently it's used uh, extensively uh, in pulse induction metal detectors. Uh, I'm not completely sure why you use the integrator, and maybe there's another way to do it. But I've looked at several circuits, and they all kind of use the same setup pretty much. Uh, you have to remember that the integrator is really good as uh, it's really good at uh, getting rid of noise. So I think that's probably why it's used to get rid of any unwanted noise. It can, it's kind of aver averaging the noise to zero. I think that's the whole point of it. Anyway, I'm going to stop here um, and I'll see you around.